and we're now here to consider the independent assurance review of the effectiveness of the multi-agency responses to child sexual exploitation in Greater Manchester. Part two review into these historic safeguarding practices in the borough of Oldham. Firstly, we will hear from Malcolm Newsom via video, one of the authors of the independent review. In November 2019, we were asked by Oldham Council and the Mayor of Greater Manchester to undertake a review into safeguarding practices in the borough of Oldham. Our terms of reference required us to provide assurance regarding allegations made on social media about the risks posed to children in Oldham from child sexual exploitation. We were asked primarily to focus our review between the periods 2011 to 2014, but had authority to extend this time frame, if necessary, to enable us to provide the necessary assurances. We acknowledge the significant strength of feeling locally in relation to this review and the commentary on social media. We are very grateful to the many individuals who have given their time to support us in our work and also the immense amount of work to recover the significant amount of documentary evidence uh, we have reviewed. We believe we've produced a thorough, diligent and independent report, not influenced by any party and have set out in the appendices the significant amount of evidence we have considered before reaching our final conclusions. We have found that throughout this period, the specialist services tackling child sexual exploitation provided by Oldham Council and Greater Manchester Police were strategically ahead of those available in many other local authorities at the time. However, these did not always translate at an operational level into the effective safeguarding of children experiencing sexual exploitation. Our own review of a sample of children has exposed significant failings in the protection provided by the statutory authorities to those children. We understand that Oldham Council and Greater Manchester Police have agreed to review the management of these cases to consider whether any further action can now be taken in respect of the men who exploited these children. We have been provided with no evidence to support the allegations circulated on social media to suggest that senior managers or counsellors sought to cover up either the existence of child sexual exploitation in Oldham or the complexity involved in tackling the perpetrators. Turn to shisha bars now. A robust approach was taken by Oldham Council and Greater Manchester Police to the emerging threat of child sexual exploitation posed by shisha bars between 2011 and 2014. Nonetheless, we have found evidence that a small number of children who were known to be sexually exploited were visiting shisha bars throughout 2011, 2012 and 2013. We have found no evidence that a BBC journalist, who we refer to as Journalist A, <coughs> colluded with Oldham Council in not highlighting the potential threat presented by shisha bars. Quite to the contrary, we've seen clear evidence that Journalist A appropriately challenged and scrutinised the position held by both Oldham Council and Greater Manchester Police and continued to investigate the story which was eventually broadcast by the BBC. Residential care homes. We have been provided with no evidence to suggest there was widespread sexual exploitation of children in residential settings in Oldham. There is evidence that some children in residential settings were being exposed to child sexual exploitation. Some of these children had suffered this abuse prior to their admission, 
There is also evidence that some children who had not been exposed to sexual exploitation were drawn into it through the encouragement of other residents. However, the evidence suggests that residential staff worked in a professional and supportive way with these children to win their trust and protect them as far as possible from further abuse. We have concluded that there were throughout this period legitimate concerns on the part of both the council and the police that the high profile convictions of predominantly Pakistani offenders across the country could be capitalised on by a far right agenda and lead to the victimisation of the Pakistani community. Social cohesion and far-right activity had been a consistent focus of the public authorities in Oldham since the 2001 riots. However, it is clear from all the evidence we have seen that the Council and its partners in no way avoided addressing this and in fact saw successful disruption and prosecution as the route to winning the com confidence of all communities in Oldham. A taxi licensing. We have concluded that we've been provided with no evidence to suggest that senior managers or councillors sought to cover up the potential exploitation of children by local taxi services. We have found that the council licensing panel had previously approved several licenses to individuals who had been either accused or convicted of serious sexual offences. However, this serious weakness was recognised in subsequent years and the council strengthened its license in licensing policies in line with the more robust national guidance. I now turn to Sophie. We have considered a specific complaint by a person we refer to as Sophie. In 2019, Sophie wrote an open letter to the leader of the council. Uh, and in summary, this letter contained serious allegations that Sophie was subjected to profound sexual exploitation and that Oldham Council and Greater Manchester Police failed in their duties to protect her. Sophie also complained that when these shortcomings were raised with both Oldham Council and Greater Manchester Police, they failed to investigate them appropriately and denied any failures on their part. We have concluded that the interventions of both the Council and Greater Manchester Police and the investigations into her allegations fell far short of what was required to protect Sophie, who was only 12 years old at the time of her abuse. Furthermore, we have concluded that these failures have been compounded by the denials that have subsequently been issued to Sophie and also to the chair of the Home Affairs Select, Select Committee at the time. This lack of candour feeds a view that both agencies were more concerned about covering up, covering up, covering up their failures mm -hmm. than acknowledging the harm that had been done to a vulnerable young person. We found no evidence that this approach was influenced by the leader of the council at the time or any other politician. However, we recommend in our report that both Greater Manchester Police and Oldham Council publicly acknowledge these serious failures and apologise to Sophie. We have also reviewed the cases of known offenders previously employed within Oldham Council and we also considered councillors and others with positions in the council against whom serious allegations have been made. While we have included as much information as possible in our published report, for legal reasons we have placed some of the detail of our findings in a confidential appendix and have put our conclusions in the published report. We have concluded that there were a number of failings in the investigation of these cases and these are set out in our report. I'll now turn to Offender A. 
A man we have called Offender A worked for Oldham Council between 1988 and 2006 as a welfare rights officer. In 2012, he was sentenced to 19 years imprisonment for serious offences relating to child sexual exploitation. And in June 2012, he was found guilty of a further 30 rape charges and was jailed for an additional 22 years. We have concluded that there were serious multiple failures by both Greater Manchester Police and Oldham Council to follow the procedures in place to investigate the threat he presented to children between 2005 and 2012. We believe that if the appropriate procedures had been followed, his offending behaviour could have been addressed at an earlier stage and potentially the abuse of his subsequent victims may have been prevented.